Okay, so what now for the Conservatives? Obviously not an ideal situation, but perhaps the strategy by these uh, MPs is let's get rid of our leader now, find a new one so we're ready for the next election whenever it comes, uh, or does this backfire? Let's bring in Lisa Raitt, former Conservative MP, deputy leader of the Conservative Party as well. Lisa, always good to see you. Your thoughts on what we're seeing here? Well, I'm looking at it from a process point of view, Todd, because for me, it really comes down to, is this as easy and as smooth as people think it is? And, and I don't think it is. I think there is not a lot of alignment between the act of parliament called the Reform Act that allows the MPs to remove a leader and put it an interim leader, and then the constitution of the Conservative Party of Canada that has the ability to actually have that leadership review vote. And the two don't seem to work to w together with one another. And as a result, we may have a situation where, sure, Aaron O'Toole may be removed as leader and they may have an interim leader. However, the party doesn't necessarily have the tools to recognize it in that moment. So it is a little bit convoluted how these two pieces work together. Clearly, the Constitution wasn't updated in order to be current with the Reform Act as it's been drafted. Are you surprised, Lisa, this is happening? I'm not. I'm not surprised it's happening because you've been hearing about it uh, for a long period of time. There's only so much time that you can actually keep everybody together. You know, we're talked about as being a big coalition. It goes both ways. You're a big coalition to support the leader, but you also need that big coalition in order to remove a leader in the way that it's happening. So they would have had to have gone to all kinds of different factions within the party to get an agreement that this is the path that they want to go down. And they have. They've They've given their notice to Scott Reed, who is the chair of the caucus. I'd like to see the notice. According to the Reform Act, they're supposed to publish it immediately. We haven't really seen who the members of the party are that have put their name to the letter or to the notice. That will come in due course. And then I'm sure they're trying to figure out the process that should be unfolding in order for this to happen. If you have 30 percent of your MPs, though, who are in open rebellion, how do you uh, be an effective leader under that, Lisa? Well, 30 MPs is one thing, an entire membership is another. And that's why the constitution of the party talks about a membership vote. There are three ways in which the leadership selection process is started off. Either somebody dies or retires, somebody resigns, or there is a vote of 50%, over 50% in a leadership review that removes the leader. Those are the three ways in which our constitution says how you move on to a selection process for a new leader. If it's not one of those, there's no real process. National Council has to figure out their way in which they're going to have it. And the key for all this, of course, Todd, is that is a national policy conference set, but that's not until August 2023. All right. And that's not, not soon enough. So 35 MPs, 30 percent of the MPs, of course, uh, the Conservatives currently have in, in the House, give or take. Who are his allies here, Lisa? What do you think? Well, I can only go with what's been reported. And I saw Michelle Rempel Garner has come out to say that I would rather be focusing not on what's happening internally, but what we're going to be focusing on in helping her own constituents. I think Michael Chong came out in support as well. And I'm sure that the, the leadership around Aaron is supportive too. But I uh, really haven't heard much of anything about who is lining up on what side. And that's the interesting part. It's a secret ballot. I don't even know if all the members are going to be in person in Ottawa for whenever this vote is going to happen. I'm sure Scott Reed, who again is the chair of caucus, is trying to figure out all of these things. Does it damage the image of the Conservative Party for this to be happening uh, out in the open? Well, first of all, I'm glad that it's happening in the open. I'd rather for this kind of disagreement to be transparent. You may not know what happens inside of the caucus tomorrow, but you will know the results. And I actually would prefer to have this kind of thing happen uh, as opposed to internal griping, leaking as sources to media and, you know, what we used to call the brown envelopes where suddenly things will appear on the news that night that you can't control mm. and a leader gets forced out. This is dealing with it one on one. And as Aaron said in his in his uh, in his tweet last night and in his his report this morning, he said, let's go. Let's let's decide this once and for all. Do you still have confidence in his leadership of the party? 
Uh, look, that's not for me to talk about right now, Todd. This party is having a very introspective look at themselves right now. I trust the MPs in that room will make the right decision because I know them all. And uh, they're good people and they have a big issue in front of them and they will sort it out like the adults that they are. And the other thing I want to ask you before we go, given your experience with the party for many, many years, deputy leader, you know how the so-called social conservative wing of the party can exert a lot of pressure. How, how do you frame that right now? If, if it turns out to be, as we suspect, that there are a lot of people who are on that area of the spectrum, so to speak, who are not happy with O'Toole, that he brought the party too much to the center, that he has agreed with things like banning conversion therapy, and the list goes on and on. I mean, how do you, how do you contain that sort of thing, Lisa? So you know what, Todd, I don't look at, maybe I'm throwing another iron in the fire here, but for me, I found this to be more of a geographical issue than I did an ideological issue. And it really came down to the changes on the carbon tax. That really resonated, and that was a really big kind of U-turn that a lot of uh, colleagues in, in the Western part of the world did not anticipate and did not expect and surprise them. So it started from there. And it continues on in terms of other kinds of uh, announcements that the leader made that they didn't agree with fundamentally. And as a result, they, they felt that it wasn't the representation they wanted. They did not like the results of the, of the election. And as a result, they want a leadership review. Remember one thing, too. Conservatives have agreed that when you lose as a leader in an election, the next, con the next convention, you must be reviewed for leadership. So we know that after we lose, we do get a chance to review the leader. And what I think the members are saying is they want it earlier than August 2023. Appreciate your time. It's always great to get you on the program, Lisa. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks, Todd.